Alive. Okay, we're on. So, uh, welcome to a show that we don't have a name for. <laughs> Jason's going to come up with a cool, uh, you know, modern name that all the kids will like. Yeah. Um, maybe it's the Blizz Boy show with your with your uh, your light in the background. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Enduros. the idea is we're gonna we're gonna just talk about why Enduros are awesome. Maybe 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 that's the name of the show. Why Enduros are awesome. So we thought if if we kind of bench race the Enduro right after it, and tonight we're doing it right after the Snow Run Enduro. It's uh, Sunday, the twenty third of January. And talk about how much fun we had today. Maybe a few more people will come out and join the fun. Pretty strong turnout today. I think it, I counted like 96 entries or something like that, which is which is a good strong entry for, for a snow run. I think um, the first thing we should say is we are not trying to compete with Cody Buck's awesome podcast. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> he put a lot he puts a lot more effort and a lot more polish into that and if you hadn't haven't heard Cody Buck's podcast you should this is just three guys uh kind of bsing about the the enduro today and how much fun it was um so I think what, what we'll try to do is go section by section but well let's just do this first I just want to quickly you know before yeah, we get no. to the section by section how'd you guys do on your on your enduro prep how were you the weather was what? What was it like? Eighteen when we took off when we we took off at nine o'clock today. Yeah. So how was your feet, your toes, your face? How how were you guys? Other than the long road section after mm-hmm. gas, I think it was seven miles or so. I think we all suffered on that one. I did pretty well. Um, I used to run an enduro jacket and and for the cold weather, and I've really gone away from that. I I just feel less bulky, so I think I had four. Four shirts on today plus a vest. So I had a short sleeve compression shirt, two Under Armour cold weather long sleeve shirts with a little bit of a turtleneck to it, then my chest protector, then my riding jersey over that. For my legs, I had one, I just had one layer or two layers. I had the Under Armour cold weather pants, you know, long johns, and then my riding pants. And other than that long road section, it really worked out pretty well for me. How yeah. are you guys? I didn't realize how cold the roads would be. I wish I had the uh, gainer, the face mask, because by the time I got to the yeah. known, my cheeks were frozen, my nose was frozen, and but once you get in the woods, you heat up. But it was pretty bad on the road. Yeah, I was good. I think uh, <clears throat> when we were doing our practice, and Tony, one time I rode uh, with two pairs of socks on a light pair, and I think it actually hurt me because I, I think I was just squeezing my feet too much and I was just running regular socks. I was fine. I was worried about my feet. That was the only thing I felt cold when we were practicing uh, before the enduro. And then uh, believe it or not, (laughs) under here got cold uh, where the wind was coming right under your helmet and and your jacket. If you did. And all I had on was a, uh, a base layer zipped up kind of a turtleneck thing, my chest protector, a riding Jersey. And then I put a winter coat on coat that I used. It's all beat up, but it's uh, it goes over. It's large enough to go over everything. And, and then a pair of compression pants underneath my riding pants. And that was it. Regular gloves. And, of course, we had gauntlets on our handlebars to block the wind. But, yeah, the the, the after gas going out there uh, to that check uh, was really cold. I'm glad they had a little propane heater out there because I had to go get my hands. My hands yeah. were real cold. I was, uh, I was using the regular gloves, too. The only thing I struggled with with my hands was, you know, my two clutch fingers got mm-hmm. pretty cold on the clutch after a while. Um, I do put tape over it. That's a, a trick I think I got from Jill Strapagne years ago. Because yeah, Jason does that too. You know, the, the, the aluminum of your clutch lever is a pretty good conductor of the cold. Um, so that helps a little bit. Uh, but like Jay was saying, once I got warmed up, I was, I was pretty okay with that. Um, I used to run the heated grips. And it just seemed like they never worked for more than yeah, half much- an event for me. It, it was always There was always a wire getting ripped out or I just just never had good luck with them even though i tried to be really careful about setting them up and protecting the wires and stuff like that they, they were just never very reliable for me so I, I haven't set up heated grips in a bunch of years i don't think cool so back um, to the first check it was it was really great to see everyone out there everyone was pumped to come ride the snow run the conditions were perfect the ground was perfectly frozen with just the right amount of snow and everyone at the known control hanging out um 
you know, everyone had smiles on their face. It was it's just, it's just like a big family and it's, uh, you know, and people are asking questions and new dudes are out there and, you know, it was, it was, there were, everyone was out there to have fun. It seemed. People, people tipping over and can't pick up their bikes. Yeah. On the ice yeah. Before they start. <laughs> yeah. That guy fell right next to me. Already you fell. We haven't even started yet. I always say that Enduros feel like more of a family than hair scrambles do. I don't know why. I feel like once you're, the race is all over and you get in, get in that area, everyone's just bench racing and it feels like a big family. Hair scrambles, it's just, I don't know, everyone's going for each other, I feel like. So it was cool. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, um, yeah, so let's just talk about the first section. So we, we went out of the Sun Valley, which is a, a great place that the Ramblers have access to for uh, hosting an event. It's nice to have a little indoor place, restaurant for the end. Uh, Steve Erickson didn't need my, my van this year, so he didn't turn into the guy from The Shining when, when he was trying to score. Um, so we went out to the state route, and then we went up to the, to the state forest. We went uh, west on the state route there up to the state forest. And then uh, most of us got there, I don't know, seven or eight minutes early, and then we, we started the first section. Uh, did we lose Jason? Oh. Looks like Jason, Jason's frozen. frozen. He's probably going to have to log back in. But why don't you talk about the start in the first section, Jim? How'd it go for you? Uh, I think it was pretty good. Uh, you know, the conditions were, were great. I'm trying to think about it. We took off right away. I had a double A and a... Uh, uh, and Jason on my row. So those guys were gone. It was, uh, it was Damon Rummel and Jason they were gone. And I was pretty much out there by myself. First section was getting out there, riding. The conditions were great. And all the ice was frozen. The ground was crunchy underneath. And it was just, so there were some sections where you could just go as fast as you wanted to go. How, how fast do you, like you always say, how fast do you want to crash? Uh, you know, so you go as fast as you, the speed you want to crash at. You know, so that's uh, that's the mentality us older guys run. I think the younger kids don't have that. Uh... All right. <laughs> he says he's coming back. But uh, um, that was wicked fast uh, running through there. It was great. Uh, I got hung up like it was a down tree. <clears throat> it was kind of on the lower side of the trail. And it was you saw some people had were smart and kind of took the high line. But uh, luckily, I didn't spend too much time there. Uh, just hopped right over that thing. And I think it was, you know, it was great. Even I, I saw the. You know, we turned at like mile 5.6. We started just, we were just having a blast. It was a super section. I think everyone came out of there, you know, and was high fiving with the check crew. That's how much fun everyone was having in that first section because it was, you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, get the conditions any better. Yeah. I felt like I rode well in there. There were, there were two places I got hung up and it, and it ended up costing me. We can talk about that. That's, that's kind of the highs and the lows of Enduro. So, one of them was early on. I had uh, guys from our club. I had Scott Nimmons and John Allen on my row. They were right behind me, you know, hanging with me through that part, first part of the section. Maybe mile, I don't know, one and a half or two. We came up over a little ridge, a little rock climb like this. And as soon as I got up, I knew I was on the wrong side of a tree. There was a half buried, frozen in the ground tree that went like this into other trees. And there was no chance to go around. Uh, I had just passed a, a slower rider and now I'm sitting there rocking my bike back and forth, trying to bump it over this tree. So, you know, time goes by quick when you're standing still. I mean, that might've cost me, I don't know, 15 seconds. You know, it feels yep. like an eternity, but it was probably 15 seconds. So Scott and this other rider got past me. I got going, came in behind him. There's Jay. I got going, came in behind him. And I was saying this to Scott. For some reason, Scott would not pass this guy. And, and the guy was a good rider. He was doing fine. But Scott just wouldn't wouldn't kind of make the move and go past him. So um, it wasn't this guy wasn't super slow. He was doing fine. But um, I kind of followed them until we got out. There was that road section, which is pretty unusual. So it was actually a little bit of tar in the middle of a competition section. We went down the road. I don't know. What was it? Maybe 100 yards? and then turned into into the trail again yes and then i got stuck i think in the same place you were talking about we we're coming down it's like a little bit of a gully a little bit of yep. a ravine, and there's a tree across it and there's a rider stuck there and he was trying to be nice he's like pointing me to go up the ravine but by that time i was you already missed I was it on the brakes i kind of got stuck there by this time i had passed nikolai nikolai came cruising by of course because he saw me get stuck and then uh, the section ended not too long after that, and I checked out at 
eight seconds after the minute. <laughs> how about no. you, how, Jay? How was your first section? It felt it really, it felt really long. It was eleven yeah. miles. Eleven yeah. miles is a pretty long section for a Nitro Enduro. But I didn't uh, know I could. I didn't know how much confidence I had in the snow. I didn't know what to feel or going into it. So I kind of took it easy. And then once I realized you can, I could kind of push. I got a lot more confident. But it was long. I was waiting for it to end, and then it came around, and I forgot what I dropped. I think a seven, I think, but yeah, it was yeah, awesome. it was definitely. You had traction. I had traction the whole time, like scary traction. I was like, "How fast can you? How fast do you want to go?" Yeah, exactly. That was what it was that section was, but like, like it didn't matter. We had it was just so it was just so fun, unbelievable. Um, I got the root sheet in here so I can remember where we were and what mileages sure. were and stuff. So, so just just for those that are that are kind of following along and trying to learn, I think there's a good number of new riders there. So this checkout was an emergency, and that means that's how I know I missed the flip by eight seconds because um, it was an emergency checkout at the emergency checks. That's when they write the seconds. Um, this event was a little bit different with known check-ins. So really, uh, the, uh, the, it was all within the rules, I think, but the Ramblers chose to kind of de-emphasize timekeeping. And then with the known Which I think a lot of people appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. I think the newer guys are like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't make any crazy mistakes and hopefully they'll be back, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I think funny, funny, kind of the, the funnest section of the day, I think was after section one until section two, there was like some really cool the transfer trail. section. Yeah. Trail yeah. transfer section. It, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a time section. It wasn't a competitive section, but some really cool cart road and some really cool trail. Um, out of section one until you got to the road to go to section two. I had a ton of yeah. Fun. I remember. I remember. I was like, <clears throat> all right. I just checked out on. I think I I did terribly in that first. Time. I didn't care. I mean, I uh, I got a. I think I got double Jason. I got a fourteen or something like that. And um, um, when I got out of there, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, we, we were transferring section, and I'm like, I still need to get to the known and on my minute, which is twenty one now because we left on seven. I dropped a fourteen. I'm like. And I felt like, and I'm like, I'm late. So I, we had to rip, we had to rip through that transfer section. It was wide as a highway. When did you, what, but man, number, you could go. <clears throat> what minute did you get there? You could huh? Go 50 miles an hour easily in that section. It was scary. Yeah, you you dropped a 14, Jim, and I dropped a 15. You know, like I said, and that's the thing about enduro. I might have been less than a minute behind you, but I missed my flip by. I missed my flip by those eight seconds, and that correct. That, that's, if that's you were game. nine seconds, you would. Have, if you were nine seconds earlier, you would have tied me in that section. That's the game. And that's a whole yeah, point. That's the game. Yeah. Exactly. That's the game. Um. So yeah, that transfer section um, was cool, and for those that are new, transfer section usually means it's usually just tar, but in this case, it was some pretty cool trail that you had to take to get to the next to get to the next section. Um. And then, you know, there, so there were only four sections today. It was a pretty short enduro, which, to be honest, I didn't mind one bit. I don't Correct. know what it was, what was it like twenty two degrees by the time we finished or something like that. So, yep. I don't mind a short enduro when when we start off and it's twelve degrees or fifteen or whatever it was. Um. And then the second section, the second timed section, was pretty short. Um, like we were talking after the event. So I like to actually make notes on my root sheet. So like approximately how much mileage. So I know going in, like, is this a, a is this section gonna be, gonna be a real sprint or is it kind of a slog? So that second section, which was the section before gas was only three and a half miles. Um, I thought it was, again, a ton of fun. I'm trying, it was all white today. I'm yeah, it's to hard to remember, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> what the second section was. I want to look up my um, score. Um, what was the second the, section? The zone was kind of like you, you dropped down like off of a off. It was like a dead end road, and you like dropped down. The known was just a couple feet after that. Um, you checked in at the known long straightaway after the known kind of cart road, um, and then just awesome trail. Up, down, left, right, just kind of like rhythm riding the whole time for for three and a half miles or so. 
Yep. Um, it was, you know, really, really cool. But again, so I, <laughs> I missed the, the first, the check in the first flip by eight. And then I missed the second check by four. Cause the, again, getting out of the second section, it was another emergency. So they were calling out your seconds and I forgot what minute it was, but he said, Oh, four. And I think I said uh, an F bomb pretty loud. <laughs> that always <laughs> now, makes now, me mad. Now I remember <laughs> then, the section. Yeah, yeah. It's and really then Scott, cool Scott and uh, Scott and uh, uh, John were there, and they they heard my F bomb, and they thought like I had made like a timekeeping error or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just just mad about missing the flip by four seconds, you know. But in that section, you know, uh, that was. Whatever my score was, that was a hundred percent for me. I didn't make I didn't make any any bad mistakes in there. Um, like I talked about that first section, I made a pretty bad mistake, and that two mistakes, and that those mistakes cost me the flip. In this case, getting the 04, that's it is what it is. That was that was as that was my one hundred percent for that section. That section, I I uh, I, I was so uh, leery of a check for some reason. I'm like. I felt like my com- my computer was moving along, and I just I didn't I didn't know where I was in the root sheet. So I I I actually slowed down, looked at a mile marker, made sure my miles was was correct, and so I and and I think I blew like a good twenty seconds just just hesitating and waiting. I should have done a lot better. I think Tony, you got a four in there, and I got a four. I felt like I could have got a late two or a three in that section, uh, but I dilly dallied too much. I was so concerned. I thought I had that morning seen a re- saw a reset in there that was going to throw us early into that checkout. So I was worried about that. And I, I, I just double check that. And that's, and that's a, uh, something, you know, Tony says all the time. We say all the time. It's called enduro brain. Sometimes the game gets in your head and it affects your riding. Uh, so that, that happened to me in that section. I, I clearly remember that. And I, I, when I came out and I got a four, I'm like, I should not, I should have done a lot better than that through that section. Cause it was, it was super fast and yeah. uh, it was awesome. How about you, Jason? You dropped a, a two in there, I think. I was just going to say the top guys were dropping ones. That's crazy to even think about. Like, um, I don't really remember that too much, to be honest. It was just like you said, it was all light. I don't know why I don't remember it. <laughs> um, oh, I, I forgot to say something. Going back to the transfer section, the untimed section where you were said, holy crap, I'm late. You know, and, and – that's where I, I definitely tend to overthink stuff. I was thinking, well, they said all the check ins will be known. Oh, no. That doesn't Correct. mean there won't be a check out. An, another check out here. So the time section with a with, with a check. Exactly. So you could have been early to a checkout, or no? It's just another check. They could have kept the time running from that from that transfer section, and it, you you could have showed up, and it could have been another a secret, and then yep. you know it's just a continuation of the trail, and then you're. You know, but I think they were being, you know, they were being, you know, fair and. Yeah, it was pretty and, cut and dry uh, today, but. Yeah. You know, I think we all get lulled into that, as you say, enduro brain kind of game where, oh, thank goodness I checked out. And then you realize, oh, I'm on trail again. Maybe I should hustle. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that happened to me at the, that happened to me at the, the Barnsway last year. I was like, I just checked out and I'm like, okay, I'm riding down a cart road. And all of a sudden I was just following a guy and he was kind of avoiding all the puddles in that, la- that one of those woods road sections, he's avoiding all the puddles. And I'm like, all of a sudden I look down and I'm like, I see like two dash one on my computer. I'm like, I'm two minutes and 10 seconds late, late. And then I just, then I had to go ripping down those dirt roads to make that time back up. And, and uh, Tony was the trail boss at that event. And I was, I said F bomb pretty, when I, and I was like, son of a, <laughs> that guy, got, he got me. And uh, I should have known better, you know. I should have known better that that there was going to be a couple of tricks up his sleeve. So uh, that, um, was the Barnes wasn't a tricky wasn't a tricky root sheet though. No, just that one section that Jason can't get over still. But we can, yeah, that's, that's another day. <laughs> <laughs> Run impossibles. That's going to be in uh, uh, Enduro 2.0. So we, we, we came out, and I think it was maybe, I don't know, a four-mile road ride? Yeah, three or four-mile mile ride, ride down to gas. And for those that are new to the game, like, what, what do you guys do at gas? And, and in particular, at a cold snow ride like today, what does what does the gas stop look like for you? Go ahead, Jay. 
Um, when I got there, <clears throat> if obviously if my if it was wet, I would have changed my gloves or goggles, but it wasn't wet, so I didn't have anything to change. I just fueled up and uh, grabbed a snack, drank, because my camelback was frozen. So I had to, fortunately, we had water, so I drank some water and then filled my tank up, and then we had 20 minutes, So and they said it was seven miles to the known after that, so I tried to be quick about it, but it's, yeah, if it's... I just tried to get out there as soon as possible because I knew that I could sit there and just go out whenever. Yeah, and when I got there, I mean, basically, when I come into the gas, is like, you know, if you got anything broken or needs repair, that's the time to do it. You got, you got 15, 20 minutes. All I had to do today, I had to smile from ear to ear anyway. I was just having so much, so much fun. Yeah, it's hard not to, <clears throat> to talk about how much fun you're having at gas because you don't have enough time to talk about it. Yeah, it's like, did you see, did you see that, that tree? And then, like, yeah, yeah. I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so we gassed up. I, I gassed up. My uh, water pack was also frozen. The, the nozzle was frozen. So yep, I, I, I took, yeah, I took a little bit of a, uh, you know, uh, power bar. Not much because, uh, you know, it's, you know, you'll learn if you eat too much of gas, uh, it'll slosh around in your stomach later on. You won't feel well. And I, like I said, gassed up water, grab something to eat real quick. And then, uh, I was off. I had, I had a, a new guy with me today. So, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was a training for him too. So got to keep moving. Yeah. Same for me. Um, I came in, uh, uh, you know, same thing. Computer starts flashing 20 minutes. Uh, hot, you know, so that's for those of you who are new, that basically means you're hot 20 minutes if you want to stay on the minute you came out of the last section on. But at gas, you also have, and any really any known, you have a chance to go back closer to your original minute or on your original minute if you can get that far back. So for me, on a day like today, kind of like what Jason was saying, it's a chance for me to kind of reconsider my clothes. But I think uh, in my old age, that's I'm not getting much better at riding, but I'm getting better at, at kind of preparing. So yep. goggles were clear. I wasn't overly sweaty and I wasn't cold except for, you know, that long road section we'll talk about in a second. So I really felt pretty good coming into gas. Um, it wasn't a ton of riding. It was only, what, 14 miles, 15 miles of trail before we had gotten there. So, but it was, it was certainly a workout. I mean, the, the, the trails were fun, but they weren't easy today. I mean, it was, I was working yeah. for sure. Same thing, gas up. Uh, I don't do a power bar. I usually do a goo of some kind. Um, and uh, what I had brought with me today, because I was worried about my water freezing in the van. So I actually like took some hot, hot tap water, put it in like some Nalgene bottles in the cooler and covered them with a towel because it was probably for nothing, but I was worried that they might freeze if it was going to be like nine degrees out. So I took my I took my mouthpiece and my camelback and I put it in there under the towel with the hot water on it, got it loosened up and and, and drank from there. But um, definitely didn't get much of a chance to hydrate. You know, thankfully you don't need it as much on weather like today. Hit the portage on and then got out of there. And I think I don't know seven or eight. Uh, Pathfinders all rolled out at the same time. That's seven or eight, probably five or six of us. About a mile down the road, I was wearing just a neck gaiter to keep my neck warm. A mile down the road, I waved everybody past me, and I, I stopped, and I pulled it up over my nose because that seven-mile road ride was tough. It was cold yeah. immediately. It was cold like at the half-mile mark of leaving. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I don't know why. Maybe because we had, you know, we were, we were kind of maybe a little bit sweat, and somehow – the wind was a little different going that direction or something, but it was a shady road as well. We were kind of under trees the whole way. And uh, yeah, it was chilly and <clears throat> just had to take your time. I mean, I was, I think I was hot 11 minutes, so I had plenty of time to get there. I could have stopped and warm myself up. I just, just wanted to get there uh, and, and sit at the known and, and um, they had heat warm up. Yeah. They had heat, little propane tank. I didn't, I didn't either. notice that. I would have taken advantage if I had noticed that. Yeah. Um, I think it, to me, it felt like it got colder. Like that ride felt yeah. like colder than the first ride out of park in the morning. The first section. Yep. Yep. And then, you know, what's nice about the known check ins is as soon as I warmed up my hands, 
I went up, I went up to the line for the check. There's no, there's no reason to sit around and wait and get colder. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, when, when you can kind of pick your line. Uh, I did that all day today. I was, I was like, I wasn't going to dilly dally and, and wait. I, I, I was like, I'm warmed up. There's, I'm not, I'm in an enduro. Let's go. I mean, I get yeah. there, get, get in my spot and then, you know, wait for a good flip and then say I'm going next and then go. And that was, I didn't waste any time sitting in the cold. I wanted to keep riding, keep moving. You get warm when you ride too. So yeah, it was just better to ride. Yeah. I mean, my, my fingers and my arms would start to kind of get cold and tight from the ride. So at the knowns, I might spend two minutes, three minutes with my, my fingertips on my radiators or put it, you know, putting them on my silencer or something like that, just to get the feeling back at my fingertips and then go. Yep. Um, so the section after gas, um, there was a bunch of people there, but, uh, I remember talking to Tina Senecal there. She was one of the check workers. How did that, that third section of the day, the section after gas go for you? That was awesome. I thought, I think that was my favorite one, but I yeah. didn't realize that you come back towards the check after. So they were kept, they, uh, they yelled, yelled at us to move out of the way, but I didn't know because when I came by, there was no one there. So I didn't know it was part of the trail. But I remember right off the bat, there was mud and rocks. So I knew I was going to like it because I like, I don't know, I like rockier trail. And uh, yeah, it was just fast and fun. And I felt like after gas, the snow got deeper. Um, it was like. Well, you're, you're skipping this section four where me and Tony turned into little crybabies. We'll talk about that. But this is. Section no, I was, a cry bear, I was a cry baby baby in section three. Section three? I knew that yeah. there was that rock garden right off the check. You go, yeah. I know it's like big boulders right into mud, hill climb. And uh, I knew that I knew that was coming because <laughs> a couple of years ago, <laughs> I, I led the pack and then proceeded to sprawl myself out in that mud hole in front of everybody and block everybody because I'm in the trees, you know. So like today or the last time? The <laughs> last time I rode there, I just blocked everybody because I just took good, the bars good, to the chest, water everywhere and good strategy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take out the opponents. But you needed to stay on the gas with those rocks because there definitely was a, a right hander and a hill climb right after that. And, but the bikes are amazing. I, I, I always get, tell everybody that. But yeah, bikes I get are really amazing. I get really chicken on the and when we when we see the breaks in the ice, I get really, really sketched out yeah. by that. I get really scared. You know, I know I should hammer down and try to get the front wheel up, but it just it sketches me out and I and I, I back off when I see that. You know, obviously that's uh, not the way to do it, but it, it gets in my head when I see just those sharp edges like that. They did a good job with X's though, like for all the sketchy areas. I noticed. I thought the arrowing was was really really good today overall. Jim and I, you and I were talking. There's one section that got us at the black and blue, the same club, the same terrain, and today I don't know where it was somewhere in that third section. I think it's a little near a pond. Coffee. It's a little motocrossy kind of place where it doubles back on itself. You I know and exactly I went like this at, at the black and blue there, and I lost the arrows in there today. Other than that, that and that's like maybe one tenth of a mile. Other than that, I thought the arrow was really strong today. Yeah, that section um, was good. I think it was. I think I started to get. I think I was starting to get physically and mentally tired by the end of that one. Because I remember. I made. I, to... I made a bunch of mistake. Bunch of mistakes. There was one right hand uphill it only went up about 20 feet it was all braided out it was frozen mud and there was about three trees down all pointing the different way my fault i took the bad line i got stuck i couldn't get over the log i went back down to the bottom and i proceeded to get stuck at the bottom again just spinning the tire in some stupid rut it felt like maybe it felt like five minutes but it was probably a minute and a half i was sitting there and i was so mad at myself I did the, something very similar. I had the two guys behind me. They were following me. We had a good pace. And uh, there was just this kind of sweeping right-hander up over a boulder. And and I just came in too hot, and I went to the left of the rock. And I got stuck in a bunch of trees. The other guys kind of saw it that I was stuck and stayed on the gas and were able to – one guy made it. <clears throat> then the other two of us slid down. I'm like, just go, go. It was the guy that was following me, Nick, today. I said, just go. Don't worry about me. I'm hosed because my electric start wasn't working today. I don't know if it's my battery or whatever. But then I just had to back the bike down. Like you said, it feels like a lifetime. You're like, I'm blowing the entire race. I'm blowing the entire race right now. And uh, 
and I had to go back down, turn around, and get my get myself back up there. That was fucking sounds like this, it sounds like it could have been the same spot. Same spot, probably. And everyone was going right to the right, and they were it was they were just clearing, no problem. Yeah, my own fault, not looking far enough ahead, and yep, that kind of stuff. I found I struggled with looking ahead today because I just didn't trust my front tire as much. It washed out a bunch of times and scared the crap out of me, and and I got really kind of hesitant about that. So then we came out back to where that section started, crossed over a dirt road. Yeah. Then it got and then it got much more technical, really tight and technical for the for the remainder of uh, of that section. Uh oh. How'd you guys do there? Yeah. It was that, that technical part at the end was like a mile was that a mile marker like fifty something, fifty two, fifty five or something like that. Probably we jumped in. How long was that? That wasn't. Yeah, it was only about another three. I think there was another three. Looks like by the root sheet, there's only maybe another two miles of uh, wood. Three three miles of woods right there. So I don't. I, I just that remember was tough, that was the tightest stuff of the day. Yeah, it was tight and, and rocks. I could not get my act together. Uh, it felt like I was I was making a mess of like every other corner, and it was for me it was pretty tight second gear stuff. Couldn't really find a flow, just fighting my way through. And I got to a point where I was, I just, I was in my head. I couldn't get my head straight. And uh, I do this pretty often in Enduros. I just started dropping the loudest F-bomb I can get to come out of my mouth. <laughs> and it just yelling as loud as I possibly can just kind of like resets my head. And <laughs> I didn't realize how funny it was until we, we were talking at the restaurant afterwards. But then. I pulled up and John Adamy's working the observation check and he looks at me and says, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, he told me, it sounds like Tony said, broke his leg back there. <laughs> I said, I said I just, all I said to him was, I suck. I suck at riding dirt bikes. <laughs> <laughs> and just to explain, and, an observation check, if, just so, so and give a quick explanation to people that are listening, what's an observation check? Well, right before that observation check, it's not a scored check. But it's basically to ensure that you're you're you rode the course correctly, because right before that section, there was a big ribbon and, and snow fenced area, and there were guys that were flying up the road another way. Well, you could be tempted to hop the course and fly with those guys and skip that section. Well, when they turn in your scorecard and it doesn't have John Adamy's signature on the observation check, they know you cut the course. So you had to hit that observation check. So uh, was, that's what an observation check is for. Was he supposed to write his initials on the bottom? Well, I think John. I think he quickly figured out that people were taping over the observation checks at the bottom of his, the scorecard, like Tony said not to in his Enduro 101. These boxes down here. Some people put their duct tape right over there. So he probably quickly figured out. I'm just going to write my initials next to check seven on the side. Yeah. So yeah, it worked out. So the, the funny, the funny part about that was. When he, I, I just thought he was asking everybody. I thought he was just being a nice guy, asking every single rider if they were okay. I didn't realize that the check workers could hear me screaming across the woods, <laughs> screaming <laughs> across the woods at, at myself. <laughs> so that's why he asked me if I was all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, how would you do in that section, Jay? I remember it was very uh, – you couldn't trust any corner. And I always try to roll – the corner i always try to stay like momentum but you i don't know i've struggled very hard and i i always uh ask myself like what does the salt look like in this section what does kelly look like in this section all of a sudden john kelly comes by and me flying and i'm like oh that's what it looks like so, <laughs> so it, it just makes it look so easy but um yeah i just tried to get through it because i knew then was coming and then i got the john and then so I've never seen an observation check, so it, it kind of confused me. But I just realized I made a mistake before of enduring my brain to just go, go, go. And then I realized that was just a check because of what he said. It was just tight in there. So, but yeah, that was yeah. definitely the hardest section. Yeah. So then we, uh, a after that observation check, it opened up a little bit. It was more flowy, you know, the, 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 end of that seven seven mile section was was pretty cool it was pretty cool and then we um i'm trying to think was there was there much of a road ride to the last section i don't think it was too bad the road ride to the last section um no it looks like only about 
Oh, that was the one with. Uh... There's a big reset in here, so there's like a four mile reset in here. So, yeah, we, there was only about a mile, mile and a half, a mile and a half or so of tar there. Yeah, and the uh, the last section of the day, I'm looking at my notes, was about an eight mile section. It looks like from uh, from sixty one sixty to well, maybe closer to ten miles. No. About an eight mile section, I think. By the time yeah. we checked out of the uh, out of the uh, under the tar there, but, I struggled but, in that section. I had a, I was tired by that point. Brain was not working right, and I, you know, grabbing the oh, front brake, like Jason said, not hitting up, trying not try to stay in the rut and not hit that soft stuff on the edge. Tight turns. Uh, I was just yelling at myself. I just made my a lot, of off, stop. A lot of off camber. Yeah, right off camber. Section. And I'm, yeah, you saw people dragging their boots along the the sides. You saw the, the boot trail on along with the dirt trail, the the, the tire trail. Uh, and then, I uh, thought for sure that I had lost studs off of my rear tire because every time, and it was especially in the the two sections after gas. Every time you'd be coming along, have to slow down quite a bit, maybe into second gear, and then you were turning uphill like this. All of a sudden, I had nothing. I had no drive out of my rear tire at all. So I was just just letting it spin up and hoping for the best and dog battling because, you know, the, the corners like that off camber kind of getting uphill, I lose all my speed. It's hard to flow for me. It's hard to flow a turn like that. Then just try to get uphill with, uh, I would, I just wasn't getting any drive out of my rear tire. I would, as you know, Jim, we were talking, I'd pretty much rally studs, which I think rally studs were probably good for a lot of the day. But as soon as we got into that, Five or six Top of that ridge. granular snow, the rally studs weren't yep. the tool for the job anymore. No. <clears throat> Even with the full friction in the front, I was snowmobiling. I was basically pushing the snow at the top of that ridge in that last section. I was just pushing the snow, and I'm like, wow, it was hard to turn. I got that arm pump. I know that. I was getting arm pump. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, were, that was a pretty technical section, and uh, – you know, as, as you were explaining to a couple of our friends when we were talking after, it's a, a nice feeling when you're, you've are you been working as hard as you can for maybe 40 minutes or so, and then you start seeing people standing around next to the trail. Yes, you, yeah. You know, they, you know they didn't walk four miles of trail to spectate. You know that you know, you're getting right. close to the checkout. When you see a guy with the dog and the guy with the bell, the cowbell ringing. The it's cowbell crazy how the... much your, your brain changes to like, oh, my God, I'm almost done. Let's go. Instead of go. like – complaining <laughs> the guy the guy i didn't know the guy had the bell and i was i was got it was good for my mental health and i was going to try to make him laugh so he started ringing the bell he didn't hear me but i said to him is it almost over because <laughs> <laughs> that was uh for me that section was a lot of work you know that's where yeah, it was you know and, and what's cool about enduro is with such a variety of terrain and when people have been riding together as long as like you and I have, Jim, you'll learn each other's strengths and weaknesses. And when it gets that tight, I really feel my size and my weight, you know, in, in street clothes, I weigh 230 something, you know, so dropping off a ledge and then trying to turn right away and it's covered in snow, that stuff's hard for me. And, you know, I was, I was given a hundred percent in there. That was, my score wasn't that good, but that was a hundred percent of what Tony had to offer today. And then, you know, and when you get to end of seven or eight miles of that, it's like, yeah, you know, that was, that was work. I was, that was my, you know, as they say in formula one, that was 10 tenths for me. Yep. Yeah. And just, it's just, I'm just sitting here thinking like, why, why are enduro is cool. We just talked about 50 miles of trail and we knew exactly where we were all talking about at the same time. It's not like a hair scramble where, you know, you got a five to eight mile loop. And, uh, yeah, you talk about that mud hole or how that mud hole got worse, but we just vividly remember, you know, 50 miles of ground, miles of trail, uh, and we can explain to it. And, and when you mention a rock or a tree or something, we know exactly what you're talking about. And this is one of the shorter Enduros. We could do this with the, the 90 milers too. It, I mean, they're just great. And I know that I remember that section. Uh, I think they used that last section in the black and blue, didn't they? Cause I did, I somehow, I did. I, I had, we've been there. We've been there before, yeah. whether it was the past one or, or times before. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely ridden that better when it's in the summertime than I have in the wintertime. Uh, it seems like it's a little, it's a little easier to ride, but uh, sure. looking at the results, I mean, 
yeah, Tony and I, we, we, you know, we're super seniors, so uh, we dropped in the 40s there. Jason was uh, 12th overall today with a uh, with a uh, 21, and the, the top guys, you know, Cameron Harris with a nine. All day he was only nine minutes late. That that, that is just, and the and then the, and then the top uh, second, third, and fourth are at 11 minutes. That is just. Dropped to nine, and one, even, of the sec- and one of the sections was thirty miles an hour. Yeah, it, to 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 know the speed these guys are maintaining at that level is just it's yeah, it just boggles the mind. They're like, I don't get it. They probably don't think anything of it, but they're they're flying at ludicrous speed. I know I you told know, you, Dad, dropping. but uh, I was talking to the, one of my the guy who beat me, Mike, and he said that his max speed was sixty one. So I, I can't even I can't even imagine going 61 on some of those car roads. He wasn't oh, he wasn't God. doing that on the road. I'm sure he was doing the speed limit on the road. Oh, and, and yeah, yeah, and the wizard yeah. probably should probably shouldn't have said that. But yeah, no, it, was, it wasn't it wasn't on asphalt. It wasn't on we weren't on asphalt that much. He didn't. There was no need to speed in the asphalt today. But yeah, some those, the, that uh, section two, you super, could go that fast. A couple of fast. the super fun things, that, and it happened in, in more than one section today, where these like we were riding up like frozen waterfalls. It's like it was a cart road that was frozen from left to right, a couple of rocks sticking out of it, and you were just yes. blasting up it as fast as you dare. I was you know, surprised I, on how much traction I had through that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was. I had my feet out. I was ready to fall over, but it stayed you, up. You had more. I had more traction in the ice than I did in the snow. That's yeah, that's better, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think that's that's how the studs yeah. work. So, yep. so part of the purpose of doing this is to get more people to come to Enduros. So, Jay, what, what do you say to the younger riders who, who've only ever done a hair scramble about what 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 was cool about today that they should know about? Um, well, first off, I say give it a try. Uh, I totally did not think I would like it, and I like it more than hair scrambles right now. So, um, but today it was just you get brand new trail and it's never ending and it's awesome and you you i don't know if you forget tape you, ha- you got people next door to get tape from but other than that <laughs> enduro is, is just uh it's just so different and uh it it messes with your brain and i feel like hair scrambles is just like if you're not fast you're you're not gonna win and enduro is it's more like it's a game and if you're good at the game then you're gonna win it and, uh, but you got to be fast and be good at the game, right? Got to be but, fast and good at the game, yeah. But uh, yeah, I definitely didn't think I'd like it, and I love it a lot. So I'm I'm addicted. Yeah, and not a lot of timekeeping today. But do you think timekeeping is hard? It, the basic timekeeping, no. When it comes to possibles and resets and all that other stuff. That's that's like you said 2.0, but that's what I'm at right now. But when it comes to checking in with a root sheet odometer and uh, mile markers, that's not hard at all. I did it when I was 16, so um, anyone can do it. Cool. Anything else in general about today? Really, you know, awesome, awesome location to to bench race with everybody afterwards. Not every location has a bar with yeah, the that band was- getting ready to play. Yeah, that had to be. I don't know. That's it's probably that was probably the best condition snow runs that we've ridden in trail wise. I think that you know, I can't think of another one that was better than that one. And you know, like I was smiling, like I said, the first two sections, like I can't believe I'm out here ripping a dirt bike through the snow. You know, it was a blast, it was just super fun. Uh, people should, you know, more people if you got if you got a register, you know, a plated bike and and uh, a motorcycle license come out and give one a shot it, they're they're you're missing out on some of the best trails in new england it really is and i'm I right like i can't wait for the next one i feel like today was the perfect uh length like it was just enough to yeah beat me yeah, up when you get yeah when you get to the point where you're mentally and physically tired now yeah. you know it's a you know they did a good yeah, job I mean, the, the ramblers did a really good job keeping the length of the, the course exact you know they know conditions all that stuff they they're not, they've been doing this for 68 years so they know how to run the snow run enduro so exactly uh, yeah, it, it was I thought you it know was... for conditions it's probably one of the tougher enduros to put on because we know how many Correct. years that it's either been postponed or canceled because they either had 
unfrozen ground and the state of Connecticut won't let, let them use the forest or they've had 18 inches of snow on the ground and yep. you know they didn't want to have to pull riders out of there with a helicopter so yep. um yeah today was awesome good good time um I wish I didn't make so many dumb mistakes uh but I felt like overall my my riding was good and it was it's just a ton of fun it's a ton of fun and uh, like Jay said, anybody who's got a registered bike should try at least one. Most of us tried one and then kind of got addicted. Uh, yeah. You know, because there's – after, and I enjoy hair scrambles too. After a hair scramble, you talk about the terrain. After an enduro, you talk about the terrain, which is much longer and more diverse. And you talk about the strategy. Like, the game. Oh, I wasn't expecting a check to be there. That one really caught me off guard. Like we were just saying, we were in a transfer section – but was it a transfer session? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. All right. Anything else before I, I cut the recording? Jay, did you think of a, a cool name that the that the young kids will like? <laughs> no. <coughs> I don't know. Have this hosted by, we're just going to have hosted by younger, better looking guys. They can't pick these uh, two old guys. That's all. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. We, need, you, some, you, we need something to catch the beard. Yeah. The shave hey. the beard. This is my snow run beard. I grow this beard specifically for the snow run, but you know, we'll see. Maybe we'll take half of it off. Kept my face warm. All right, guys. Thanks. But if we post this to YouTube, put this on. You know, comment on what you guys want to hear more. Uh, you know, do you want to learn more about Enduro or or uh, less talking or younger dudes or whatever? You know, <laughs> put it in the comments. Shave faces. <laughs> Shave faces. All right, I'm stopping the recording. All right.